tooth number 13, maxillary left 5, referred to me after the attempt of a root canal treatment on a severely calcified root. I'm going to show you how I leveraged the information on that cone beam scan in order to treat this case. Stick around. I'm Bill Nudera. Welcome to my channel dedicated to clinical endodontic education. This tooth was diagnosed with previously initiated pulp status and asymptomatic apical periodontitis, referred to me to manage after an attempt was made to initiate root canal treatment. The prior root canal treatment attempt doesn't look that bad. It appears to be well-centered, at least within that mesial distal orientation, and there's a small periapical radiolucency present that appears to be weighted more towards that mesial. There's absolutely no discernible root canal system. Here are the highlights from the cone beam scan. In the axial plane, that prior access is slightly weighted to the mesial, but again, not bad for a freehand access this deep. I still don't see a well-defined canal, and there's an area of low density there at the apex. In the coronal plane, we see that there's broad root morphology. That means there's potential for multiple canals, or at least one big broad canal system. The access appears to be slightly directed towards the palatal. In the sagittal plane, there's no signs of a visible canal, and again, the area of low density is visible. The access looks pretty well centered mesial distally. After removing that material from the access and comparing what I saw clinically to what I saw on the axial plane, I was able to adjust and recenter this approach more down the long axis. And knowing that that prior axis attempt was directed a little bit more to the palatal, I then weighted my new axis approach more towards the buckle. And it was really difficult for me to tell whether or not I was dealing with only one or two portals of exit. Both the axial plane and that sagittal plane gave me a really good starting point for my target access to try to identify the internal anatomy. So I repositioned and began advancing apically. After advancing just a few millimeters, I was able to identify a canal. I did make an attempt to look for a second canal, but I was unsuccessful. I captured a cone fit radiograph and it showed the canal taking a significant curvature to the mesial with that portal of exit well centered on that lesion that was also weighted to the mesial. This was a bit of a surprise to me. I wasn't expecting this canal to take a curvature and I think I got a little bit lucky here that my files actually follow the natural pathway of that root canal system. You can actually see my attempt to identify that second canal in that obturation photo. I closed the access with a dual cure bonded resin and referred the patient back for the final restoration. At one year, we see the tooth has been restored properly and we see full resolution to the apical pathology on this two-dimensional projection image. The patient remained asymptomatic and the tooth remained functional. At five years, we see no changes periapically. It still appears to be stable with no signs of apical pathology. I took a scan at five years. We see that that root canal system is well-centered in both the axial and coronal planes, and there's absolutely no signs of apical pathology. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video presentation of mine today, and I look forward to seeing you on future videos. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of my new videos. I'm Bill Nudera. Thanks for watching.